It began with a simple question, how does light behave? For centuries, scientists debated whether light was a particle or a wave. Isaac Newton insisted it was a stream of particles. Thomas Young later demonstrated it acted like a wave. But when quantum physics entered the picture, everything changed. Because in one humble experiment, just two slits and a beam of particles, we discovered something profoundly unsettling. Reality itself might not be real. This is the double slit experiment. It sounds basic, even childish. You fire particles, like electrons or photons, at a barrier with two openings and observe what pattern appears on the screen behind it. You'd expect two clusters matching the slits, but that's not what happens. When both slits are open and no one's observing, the particles form an interference pattern, a wave-like distribution, as if each particle went through both slits at the same time, interfering with itself. Not as a particle, but as a probability wave. But here's the twist. When you place a detector to see which slit the particle actually goes through, the interference disappears. The particle chooses one slit. It behaves like a particle again. The act of measuring collapses the wave function. Observation doesn't just record reality, it changes it. Think about that. These particles are not just small balls bouncing through space. Until measured, they exist in a superposition, a cloud of probabilities. They don't have a definite position or path. They are possibilities, and your observation makes them real. This isn't just theory. It's been tested over and over again with photons, electrons, even large molecules like buckyballs. Every time the same eerie conclusion, unobserved, the universe behaves like a wave of possibilities. Observed, it collapses into a specific outcome. So what does that mean for reality? If observing a particle changes its behavior, then is the world dependent on us? On consciousness? Is reality objective or does it emerge from measurement? Some physicists say this is a mistake in interpretation that observation just means any interaction, even with a sensor or environment. But that explanation raises new questions. What counts as an observer? A camera, an atom, a conscious mind? And that brings us to the weirdest implication of all. What if the universe doesn't exist in any definite way until it's observed? What if reality is not a fixed stage, but a dynamic script, one that only writes itself when someone looks? The double-slit experiment shattered the idea of a deterministic universe. It replaced certainty with probability, objectivity with entanglement. Reality, it seems, is not made of things, but of information, possibility, context. And that realization is just the beginning. Let's go deeper. The double slit experiment doesn't just challenge our common sense. It challenges the very foundation of how we think the universe works. At its core lies the mystery of wave-particle duality. The idea that quantum entities like electrons and photons can behave either as particles or as waves, depending on how we measure them. But this isn't a trick of language or perspective. It's a fundamental property of the quantum world. And it gets even stranger when we try to make sense of why this happens. Physicists use the concept of the key wave function to describe a quantum system. It's a mathematical expression that encodes all possible states a particle could be in. When unmeasured, a particle isn't in one state. It exists in all its potential states simultaneously, like a coin spinning in midair. But the moment we measure it, snap, it chooses a single outcome. This is called wave function collapse. The big question is, what causes the collapse? Some theories say the collapse happens due to interaction with another system called um decoherence. So, according to this view, once a quantum system becomes entangled with the environment, say, by bouncing off an air molecule or hitting a detector, its delicate wave function breaks down. The superposition vanishes. You get a definite outcome. But decoherence doesn't fully explain why a particular outcome occurs. It describes how superposition disappears, but not how one reality is chosen from all the possibilities. Others look to the role of consciousness. Could it be that an observer's awareness plays a role in collapsing the wave function? 
This controversial idea, sometimes called the observer effect, was taken seriously by some of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics. The physicist Eugene Wigner proposed that consciousness might be necessary to complete the measurement process. That without a conscious observer, the wave function doesn't collapse, meaning that reality isn't fully real until it's experienced. This idea sounds mystical, but it's rooted in genuine confusion about the nature of measurement. After all, the mathematics of quantum mechanics works perfectly. It predicts experimental outcomes with staggering precision. But the interpretation of what the math means is still hotly debated. There are multiple interpretations of quantum mechanics, each offering a different take on the double-slit experiment, and none universally accepted. Take the quant Copenhagen interpretation, the most traditional view. It says quantum systems don't have definite properties until they're measured. The wave function represents our knowledge of the system and measurement collapses it into a single state. Simple, but deeply unsettling. Then there's the many worlds interpretation. It claims that the wave function never collapses at all. Instead, every possible outcome happens, but in separate parallel universes. In one world, the particle goes through the left slit. In another, the right. In yet another, it hits a different point on the screen. We don't see these other worlds, but they all exist. Every measurement spawns a branching multiverse. This avoids the mystery of collapse, but replaces it with a dizzying infinite cosmos of possibilities. Another idea is Shay Bismer, quantum Bayesianism, which treats the wave function not as a property of the world, but as a reflection of the observer's beliefs about the world. Measurement is not about discovering an objective reality, but updating our expectations. In this view, quantum mechanics is personal, subjective, an agent-centered theory of probability, not a description of some hidden reality out there. Each of these interpretations agrees on one thing. The double-slit experiment is real, repeatable, and profoundly strange. But they disagree wildly on what it means. Is reality split into infinite versions? Is it constructed from consciousness? Is it a probabilistic web that only reveals itself when you interact with it? And that leads us to one of the most haunting questions in modern physics. Is the universe deterministic? In classical physics, everything obeys cause and effect. Given enough information, you could predict the future with perfect accuracy. But in quantum mechanics, randomness rules. You can calculate probabilities, but not certainties. No matter how much you know, you can't predict the exact outcome of a single particle's path through the double slit. It's inherently unknowable, like rolling a cosmic die. This quantum indeterminacy isn't just a gap in our knowledge, it's a built-in feature of reality. And that changes everything. It means the future isn't fixed. That possibility is fundamental. That uncertainty is not a bug, but a law. It also means the universe doesn't evolve in a straightforward, linear way. It evolves through waves of probability, collapsing into outcomes only when observed. Reality isn't a single line, it's a branching tree of potential timelines, a tapestry of what could be constantly collapsing into what is. And here's where the double-slit experiment becomes more than a physics problem. It becomes a philosophical one. What does it mean to say the universe depends on observation? If unmeasured particles don't have definite properties, then what about unmeasured people? Unmeasured galaxies? Is there a reality beyond perception, or is perception reality? Even time itself becomes murky. Some interpretations suggest that measurement doesn't just determine the present, it influences the past. This is called geretrocausality. In certain quantum experiments, the act of observing a particle in the present appears to determine how it behaved in the past. Cause and effect become reversible. The arrow of time bends. This isn't just weird, it's revolutionary. It suggests that reality is not a static backdrop, but an evolving structure shaped by information, interaction, and awareness. It suggests that reality may be fundamentally relational, that particles only have properties in relation to other things, that nothing exists in isolation, 
In this view, the universe is not made of particles or waves or fields. It's made of relationships, networks of interaction, dynamic loops of information. And we, our minds, our measurements, our questions, are part of the loop. So the next time you hear someone describe the double-slit experiment as just a physics demo, remember this. It might be the single most important clue we have to understanding what reality really is. Not solid, not fixed, not passive, but alive with uncertainty, dancing with possibility, waiting for someone to look and collapse it into existence. If the double-slit experiment reveals anything, it's this. Our classical understanding of reality, the world of objects, positions and predictable outcomes, is an illusion. At the quantum level, the rules change. Logic twists. Certainty evaporates. We enter a realm where observation shapes outcomes, where particles exist in multiple states until measured, and where the very act of knowing something brings it into being. But just how deep does this rabbit hole go? Let's revisit the experiment with a twist. The what delayed choice experiment, proposed by physicist John Archibald Wheeler. In this version, the decision to observe the particle, or not, is made after it has passed through the slits, but before it hits the detector screen. You might expect the particle's behavior to be set once it goes through the slits, but quantum mechanics doesn't play by that logic. If you choose to observe which slit it passed through, even after it's passed, the interference pattern disappears. If you don't observe, the wave behavior reappears. It's as if the particle knows whether you're going to observe it, not just in the present, but in the future. This seemingly retroactive influence defies common sense. It implies that the future can affect the past, not in terms of classical causality, but in terms of how reality is defined. The particle's past state, whether it went through one slit or both, only becomes real when a future observation is made. Even more bizarre is the quantum eraser experiment. In this setup, the information about which slit the particle passed through is recorded, but later erased. And when that information is erased, the interference pattern returns. It's as though the universe itself forgets what happened and restores the wave-like behavior. These results suggest that information itself, what can and can't be known, is fundamental to how reality behaves. So what is the universe really made of? Particles, waves, information, or something else entirely? One emerging idea is that reality is not fundamental, but emergent. That space, time, and even causality arise from deeper principles rooted in quantum information. According to some physicists like Carlo Rovelli, reality is best understood in terms of relational quantum mechanics. Nothing exists in isolation, only in relation to something else. There are no absolute states, only relative information shared between systems. Others go further. In 2008, physicist John Preskill coined the phrase, it from qubit suggesting that information, not matter or energy, is the true building block of the universe. According to this view, reality emerges from the processing of quantum bits, qubits, that store and transmit information. In other words, the universe behaves like a giant quantum computer. This isn't just theoretical speculation. The mathematics of quantum computing, entanglement and teleportation has revealed that quantum information obeys strict rules. Information can't be destroyed. It can be transformed, encrypted, even entangled across vast distances, but it's always conserved. This led to a radical proposal that Rush Black holds, once thought to destroy all information, actually preserve it, encoded in subtle correlations at their event horizons. The holographic principle, proposed by Gerard to Hooft and Leonard Suskind, suggests that all the information in a volume of space can be described by the information on its surface like a cosmic hologram. If true, this implies that the 3D universe we inhabit might be a projection of quantum information stored on a 2D boundary. A mind-bending idea, but one that's gaining traction in theoretical physics. 
So what does all this have to do with the double slit experiment? Everything. Because that humble experiment isn't just a demonstration of weird particle behavior. It's a window into the quantum fabric of reality. It shows us that particles don't have fixed properties. That observation shapes outcomes. That time and causality are slippery. That information is king. It also hints at something even more profound, the role of consciousness. Now this is where things get controversial. Mainstream physics tends to avoid talk of consciousness, but the observer effect raises a thorny issue. What is an observer? Is it any physical system that interacts with another? Or does conscious awareness, your mind, your perception, play a special role? Some theories, like those explored by physicist Roger Penrose, suggest that consciousness and quantum mechanics are linked. That the mind is not a classical machine, but a quantum process. That consciousness might be the missing piece in the quantum puzzle. Others, like Max Tegmark, argue the opposite that consciousness is an emergent phenomenon with no special role in quantum collapse. Still, the question won't go away. Because at the heart of quantum mechanics is a mystery that touches everything. How does potential become actual? How does the formless wave of possibility become the specific shape of experience? And why does measurement, observation, seem to make that happen? We don't have answers, but we have clues. The double slit experiment shows us that the universe is not passively out there. It's not a fixed film playing out independently of us. It's an interactive dynamic system, a theater in which we are not just spectators, but participants. Every time we look, measure, or ask a question, we collapse a wave of possibility into a moment of reality. Every interaction shapes the next. Every observer changes the system. The boundary between subject and object blurs, and perhaps that's the greatest revelation of all. That reality is not a cold, mechanical structure obeying rigid laws, but a responsive, evolving process. A dialogue between matter and meaning. A dance of uncertainty and insight. A quantum dream that becomes real the moment we wake up. And look, the double-slit experiment isn't just a quirk of subatomic physics. It's a key. A portal, a reminder that beneath the familiar surface of everyday life lies a world of unimaginable strangeness. A world where the lines between reality and illusion, between the observer and the observed, are not just blurry, they may not exist at all. So where does that leave us? With a chalkboard full of equations, a lab bench of lasers and detectors, or something deeper, a new way of thinking about reality itself? The double-slit experiment began as a question about particles and waves, but it evolved into a question about existence, about whether reality is fixed or fluid, whether the universe is independent of us or somehow shaped by our presence within it. Maybe the most unsettling truth is also the most liberating. The world isn't what it seems. Beneath every solid object is a fog of probabilities. Behind every certainty is uncertainty. And perhaps behind every observation is a choice, not just by the universe, but by us. Because if reality doesn't truly exist until it's observed, then we're not just in the universe, we are part of how it becomes real.